I have been uh, threatening to do this walk, haven't I, for at least two weeks, possibly three, maybe five, possibly a year. It's uh, the Avebury Stones, which is uh, a very historic site in, uh, in England. And uh, it's in the, in the south of England. And it has these stones that are 4,000, well, they say somewhere between 4,000 and 5,000 years old. I believe uh, the stones were brought um, from the direction of Wales, if not Wales. Do your homework, Neil. Oh, Studio Neil will do that in a moment for me. But uh, an incredible feat, really. I mean, when you think just down the road, we have Stonehenge. Those huge, huge stones that were, that were put in place that people have marvelled at and, and wondered about for years. How did they get here or there? How on earth did they transport them? More to the point, how did they lift them up? All those kind of things, yes. And uh, so we find ourselves at Avebury, was where the stones are slightly smaller, but uh, you can walk amongst these, and it's absolutely fantastic. And I know we're going to get some, some great pictures this week as we go photo walking together. Hang on a minute. Don't peek too early, Neil. You've got a jingle for that. Welcome to... Photography Daily, the Friday photo walk. It's the show of the week where we take a walk with our cameras, you and I. You bring the ice-cold lattes and I'll bring along the digital mailbag with your thoughts and stories about this thing we love called photography. And in between, I'll play some inspirational words from former guests and photographers. This week, I'm getting sorely tempted to spend far too much money on a black and white camera. And it's all your fault. Some of our contributors are getting back out on the street again. And I say some because others are having to find shelter in their homes once more sadly we talk about having faith in your work pictures that you can practically hear we do a first thing that you see we talk projects and making pictures of mysterious doors we go find a crop circle talk about inspiring our young ones and making pictures in the most beautiful part of the world well one of them because these stones in Avebury here are pretty incredible too as a setting I'll come back to that in a moment but just before we're supported by our friends at mpb.com, the people and website to go to if you want to buy, sell or trade used camera gear safely in the US, the UK or Europe. Protected by a guarantee when you buy, paying out quickly when you sell. And right now, it's MPB's Photo and Video Kit Hall of Fame 2021. It's that time of year again, with voting ending on the 6th of August. A committee of world-renowned photographers, journalists and influencers have selected nominees in five categories. Classic, Game Changer, Iconic, Road Tested and Trendsetter. Now it's time for you to vote on the best photo and video kit of the digital age. Go to mpb.com and on their blog you will see how to vote in there and you can see of course the kit that's been nominated. By casting your vote you'll have a chance to win the 2020 iconic inductee, the Hasselblad 500CM. So go to mpb.com. We'll have a link of course on the show page today. Right, Avebury Henge and Stone Circle. It is, quote, one of the greatest marvels of prehistoric Britain. Built during the Neolithic period, the Henge is a huge circular bank and ditch, encircling an area that includes part of Avebury village itself. It's the largest stone circle in Britain. Originally, there were a hundred stones. Some of them weigh up to 40 tons. And though nobody really knows why they were brought here and positioned, it's believed it's something to do with worship in Neolithic times, protecting against natural disasters and diseases. Clearly, we've not been dancing around them enough of late. Later on during the medieval age, pagan ritual became more the thing, really. And then along came agriculture and some building work, which saw some of the stones sadly destroyed. Today, of course, the only thing allowed to be built here are car parks, or cash tills, as I like to refer to them. Though preserving this site is, in all honesty, not free at all, really. So in that you can wander through them and around them for free, it's an important way to donate toward their upkeep. I'll no doubt complain about the parking at some point, but just put that down to the musings of somebody who hadn't at that stage properly thought about just how hard it is to maintain a UNESCO World Heritage Site dating back four to 5,000 years. Another fact check for you, the stones weren't delivered, as I suggest, via a Neolithic UPS from Wales. Though how they made the journey two miles from the quarry site is still a marvel wondered about by many experts. 
200,000 tons of stones quarried before a time you could blast them out of rock faces. Stones in the 17th and 18th century just started to vanish. Still a feat if you consider their sheer weight. Many lost to agricultural requirement for space and they were buried. And some used to build houses, which is not so subtle. Here, have you seen the uh, 30 ton stones that were out in the field this morning? No? Nice new house, by the way. Nice shade of grey. Uh, reminds me of something. There's far more history to read, and I'll leave a link on the show page. It's a coffee and at least three Garibaldi's worth of read. Right, shall we go walking then amongst them? Blends caps off. Sunscreen for this one. Boots primed. Let's walk. Right, you, uh, you monochrome lot. Those of you with these beautiful Leica monochrome cameras. Hang on a moment. Hold that thought straight away. I know this is going to happen a lot today because, uh, as you know, I'm at the Avebury Stones and uh, look, there's, <laughs> there's such a lot to photograph. Um, I forgot to, I, I wish I had, um, I took one picture, which I, I think I'm going to be mildly proud of. So much so, I might put it at the front of my collection on the show page of the, the pictures that I take on my photo walk because I always put mine. I put them down the bottom of the page, as you well know. It, it, no, it's become, it's become tradition now. I want your pictures above mine, everything you do. But uh, I, I got a picture of uh, Edge 4 because there's a stone coming up which I want to take a picture of. Um, a picture of uh, sheep because it's a very hot day today. You're going to hear me. <laughs> going to sound like an old... English collie dog today um, yeah there, there was sheep just hanging out in the shade behind one of these huge stones and uh, I thought well that, that's quite nice but uh, right behind it I noticed there was a road and uh, along the road there were cars going backwards and forth and I thought oh, that's okay but uh, I really want to try and get something like a motorcycle or a or a cyclist, and lo and behold, I waited about five minutes. You never have to wait that long, do you? And uh, a motorcyclist came past with a passenger, so that was even better. And I shaped myself up for the shot, slightly slower shutter speed. There's a tongue twister, so that quickly. And uh, I managed to get the managed to managed to get the motorcycle with some nice motion, and the sheep's just dozing, dozing in the in, in well in the shade. Here we go. Look, look at this stone. Now look, this, this to me, this looks like it has, and it looks like it's just been, and it may have been, I don't know, some people believe this, don't they, dropped from very high up, from outer space, just, it's like a canine tooth shape, and it's just gone bang into the earth. You wouldn't want to be underneath when it landed, but it's fascinating, look at it, it's huge. Uh, the, the thing to, to try and do today with these pictures is I want to try and be getting some context. I mean, the sheep with the stone worked and the motorcyclist, that adds some context. Sometimes uh, they're, they're quite close to buildings. So I want to try and make sure I get some like that. And if people are wandering past as well, but uh, this one doesn't seem to have anybody there. But I think it's a, it's a worthy shot, this one. Oh, peaked early there. Hang on a minute. That wasn't... <laughs> Wasn't even focused on the correct thing. We'll try that again, shall we? Yeah. ND filter on. Slightly shallower depth of field. F2. F2, Neil, that's not that. You, you're an F4 boy, usually. I know. What have we got? 400th. And uh, there we go. That's better. Trusty, trusty X100V out with me again. Although I did buy a proper Walker's shirt the other day. Uh, I look like I could go on safari now. I really do. And uh, it's, got, it's got a top pocket, which might well introduce the, uh, using the, the X-Pro one of my vintage lens again. Tim Binder, our friend Tim Binder, who bought me that lens. He'll be from, from the States all the way over from, from Ohio. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Tim, your lens might, might be back in action again, I think. Because, uh, well, those thinking, what, what on earth is, does he mean by this? Uh, I try and hold the microphone in one hand and, uh, and the camera in the other which means if I'm using a, a more manual setup, I can't do that at all. So I have to pop this microphone in a top pocket. And T-shirts don't have top pockets in the summertime, do they? Anyway, moving on. Right, monochrome Leica people, I have a bone to pick with you. 
I, I am getting pictures and stories from you that are making me very tempted to do something exceptionally stupid indeed. Or shall I say, maybe the correct term would be emotionally stupid. Um, I, I, <laughs> if it weren't for the fact that Boris Johnson now essentially owns my backside, that's a horrible expression, isn't it? I'd be very tempted to get a, a loan out. You can't do that, Neil. That's a terrible Boris impression. I own you. I know you do. I can't afford any more loans. Thanks very much, Boris. Moving on, uh, briskly. Um, yeah, so, so that's not happening. Um, I can hear Dad as well. He'd say, no, don't get a loan, son. Save up. Save up for this. Or sell granny. No, he wouldn't have said that. He might have said sell granny. Um, but if you don't know what a Leica monochrome is, you're not necessarily... Because uh, a, a lot of different people are joining us now. Some, some that are, you know, committed iPhone or smartphone photographers, which is fantastic. Because this is a programme about uh, just enjoying getting out walking with your camera. It's not about the camera that you have around your neck, although here I am saying I'm getting very, very jealous about a particular type of camera. But as a photographer, the pictures that come out of this thing, oh, they're absolutely... Well, if it, if it was a cookery show, they'd be, they'd be delicious and perfectly seasoned. Or as... Uh, what, did, um, what did Clarkson once say on Top Gear about, um, about a particular car? He said, this car, was a, this car was a dessert. It would be a knickerbocker glory with a cherry on top. I always remember him saying that. Uh, but yeah, if you don't know what a monochrome is, let me tell you, it's a well, it's a it's a, a camera that just shoots black and white, a digital camera that just shoots black and white. Now I know you're saying straight away, but Neil, can't you just switch it on to black and white? Or when it's in Photoshop or Lightroom or the various apps that uh, that are available out there, can't you just convert it to black and white? Well, yes, you can, but it's not quite the same. And there's a really there's a really technical explanation for why. And if you give me just two paragraphs, because that's all I've copy-pasted, I'm going to try and explain what that difference is. Good luck, Neil. <laughs> I know, it's like a mission, this, isn't it? Stand by. Well, I copy-pasted this to you with love. You, you know me, I'm not that technical. So that we can try and learn together. Are we sitting comfortably? Right, the benefit of a monochrome sensor is that you don't need to demosaic. Each pixel you capture, because that's how pictures are recorded digitally, aren't they? It's a, it's a pixel, or lots of pixels, millions of pixels. Each, each pixel that you capture becomes one pixel in your final image, so one for one. You don't need to interpolate missing colour values for each pixel. So you don't need to call on neighbouring pixels. You don't experience the slight blurring effect that this has. Oh, <laughs> you lost me at the first few words, Neil. I know, stay with me, stay with me. It's OK, we can do this together. Hold my hand. The final image will be inherently sharper. See, here we go. Now it's beginning to make sense than most colour cameras can achieve and you get a higher base ISO because, oh, hang on, I feel a bump in the road coming. The colour filters used on most sensors absorb around one EV of the light. That's exposure value. Since each filter has to absorb the two colours, it's not allowing to pass through the sensor. The green filter in brackets absorbs the red and blue light, for instance. This means that the silicon of a monochrome, the silicon, don't you mean the sensor? That must be in sensor. No, the silicon, it is, of a monochrome sensor receives around one stop more light at any given exposure and you get better tonal quality. <sighs> what do you think? Is Granny shifting uncomfortably in her armchair yet? Oh, it's making a lot of sense. He's going to go buy a monochrome. Um, Morris Webster, um, you are the latest to tempt me. Uh, and there are, there are some sublime pictures on the website page today. Um, in fact, it's a very, very busy show page today. We always uh, post up pictures. Well, from those that send in. I mean, you don't have to send pictures in. There's plenty of mails that we, we read out that don't come with pictures. And that's great because it's nice to get your thoughts too. But for those that send their pictures in from their photo walks, 
and projects and stuff, then uh, we put them on the on the show page. And it's a is it's an exceptionally busy show page today. Great, lots of pictures for you to see, lots of inspiration, hopefully, and definitely here Morris Webster's pictures, made with his uh, his Leica M and his 50 millimeter lens. Morning, Neil. A few photos from our Friday photo walk. Ben, one of your three wise photographers from episode 164, and I made last week. Yes, Ben. Episode 164 was just prior to Christmas. And I spoke to uh, three wise photographers. Three sort of inspirational, rising photographers with things to say. And Ben was one of them. It reminded me how much I've missed and enjoyed walking the streets of London, capturing the contrasting architecture, people and the light and the vibe. Am I too old to use that word, he says in brackets. Morris, no. I, I often get told off for using words in our house. And I'm not talking about cursing words. I'm talking about words that the kids hear on, on, uh, on TikTok. If I dare repeat them, I'll get, Dad, don't do that. It's so embarrassing. Something like that. Uh, our walk, all 18 kilometres of it. Whoa, you had a good walk. That's a fair few steps. We should start. You know, I did think about this the other day. I'm just while it's at the top of my, at the at the top of my head here. Top of my head. Front of my head, front of my thoughts, or whatever. I did, I did think about starting to... Uh, but the trouble is, not everybody would have the kit to do this, would they? Not everybody likes the app that shows them how many footsteps they're, they're taking, do they? But I did think it would be fun to have photo stories that are accompanied by the amount of steps that you took. Uh, so, I tell you what, for those that can do that, why not? Send me the, send me the, send me the step count. That'd be fun. Neil, you need to get out more if that's your idea of fun. <laughs> um, our walk, all 18 kilometres of it, all started at uh, London Bridge. We crossed Tower Bridge to explore the city, including St Mary Axe, which is, uh, which is the gherkin, isn't it? St Mary Axe. I've, done, uh, I've shot a couple of weddings, and well, three, I think, three, maybe four in St Mary Axe. Wonderful place to photograph in. Once you get up the top, though, the gherkin. I've got the right building, haven't I? Yeah, you're right, Neil, carry on, yeah. Um, once you get up the top, then um, if it's a really sunny day, <laughs> then there's nowhere to hide. The sun is streaming on through, but it's fantastic. And uh, yeah, I, I love photographing weddings there. Uh, we went around the, uh, the area around Lloyds of London, Brick Lane, Shoreditch and the Bank of England, the Royal Exchange area. And then we walk west to Lycan Mayfair to see Alan Schaller's exhibition, which is a wonderful body of work for anybody interested in his style and or black and white photography. Perhaps somebody to add to your interview list. Well, Morris, I'll, I'll let you into a... Well, it's not really a secret. I'll just tell you um, that I have uh, I've contacted Alan a number of times, actually. Um, although I should probably... I should probably take a leaf out the book of my guest from yesterday, Tim Wallace, who was talking about stop emailing people, phone them. Um, and it's a trick that's worked for me a little bit of late, actually. So maybe, yeah, maybe that's what I should do, if I, if I can find his phone number, of course. But if, if anybody knows Alan, could you tell him? I'm trying to get in touch with him. And we'd love to hear about his work, because I'm a big fan of his too. He's wonderful, as you say, black and whites. Thankfully, I managed to escape the store without adding to the camera and lens collection, and then we headed back east to Canary Wharf. The photos I've sent, yes, they're on the show page today, are mainly located around the city and show that uh, whilst there are more people returning to the streets, COVID is still impacting on numbers. And the, uh, the absence of suits was very noticeable. Here's hoping the return to normal continues. Uh, street photography without people's a, a bit of a challenge. Thanks, as always, for the podcast. And uh, as I say, you can see Morris's... I think uh, some of these Ben's pictures as well. But anyway, you can see them You can see them on the show page. They're phenomenal. They're fantastic. The rendition out of this camera. Oh, I am rubbing... Well, I would if I wasn't holding my emails in one hand and this microphone that I'm talking to you in the other hand. I would be rubbing my knees. All the best from Morris. Uh, I'll uh, put Morris's... Instagram link in there for you as well so you can you, if you're like me and you're thinking oh, I need one of those monochromes in my life then you can uh, you can go and enjoy that right we need something to take buying stuff off our minds for a moment don't we so a, a brief 
respite of inspiration and a complete left turn at the traffic lights. Uh, here's a few words from Ed Cashy from episode 184 from the Seven Agency, who I, I always feel, I, when, I, when we play these pieces back, you know, the, the one or two minutes from former guests that we can call upon, uh, Ed Cashy is one of those that, uh, that I always feel I can go to and find a, a nugget, something really golden for you, some inspirational chat, something to make you think, something to, to go away with for the week. You think, oh, right, I didn't know that. So here's Ed Cashy. I'll tell you what, though. I bet he uses a Leica monochrome these days. I have no doubt. By the time I was prepared to go to university, I was imagining I'd become a writer. And uh, as I say, uh, my freshman year college poetry professor absolved me of any thought that I could be a writer. He was actually quite brutal. Oh. And so, you know, I'm just like an 18 year old kid, like, oh, damn, what am I going to do now? And thankfully, I went to a university, Syracuse University in upstate New York, that has a, one of the best photojournalism programs in the world. And so I, for some reason, I pivoted and said, maybe I'll do photography. And it's so curious to look back and imagine like how that all happened then. But anyway, and then within two or three months of learning basic black and white darkroom photography, I was enthralled. It was like... I, I was addicted, you know. I Basically, I could imagine my life forever doing this and it never getting boring or repetitive or, you know. Uh, and then what it tapped into were a few things. It, it was like synthesized my natural curiosity, my desire to sort of be a, a, a learner, which I, to this day, for the day I die, I will want to learn and try to understand things. But I, it was able to mix it with my social and political heart because I grew up in New York in the 60s and 70s, you know, where like the, the breast milk of that time was, was you know, anti-Vietnam War protests and women's rights, uh, civil rights movement, all these things, you know, environmental rights, Earth Day. All, this was like this blossoming mm. of progressive thought. Mm. And so that was deep in me. And also this desire to help people, to be engaged with people. So. So photography, thankfully for me, became this sort of, it synthesized all these different strands that were within me at a time where I had no clue because I didn't, I wasn't self-aware enough. Ed Cashy from episode uh, 184. I just had a, a tractor just a moment ago. I wasn't recording at the time, uh, but uh, I wish I had been because uh, you know me for the sounds of what's going on around us. And he's disappeared just slightly up the hill. But one of the most amazing, one of the fantastic things about Avebury is that, uh, well, I mean, I understand Stonehenge, which is just down the road, a World Heritage Site that I'm sure everybody must have heard of. It's a you know, very Im important heritage site uh, in the UK, in England. But I understand how, you know, to look after it, they've, they've roped it off, but they've made it a big visitor. It's kind of, well, for me, it's a, it's a bit... I don't know. It's it's a it's been made into not not so much a theme park, but I think it's it's lost a little bit of the of the mystique. The reason why you you came to see it was not to walk through a a visitor centre where you can I don't know can you can you buy fluffy um, Stonehenge stones or I, badges and. And you know all the stuff you can buy when you go to a, a visitor attraction, but uh, here at Avebury, it's not like that at all. And there's, I mean, it's slightly different because the stones they sort of they travel through the village. It's wonderful. If you live in this village, you're one of the luckiest people in the world. It's absolutely beautifully picturesque. Although, <laughs> although hopeless for parking in, I had to park right out the way. It cost me a proper arm and a leg. But apart from that, everything else is free. There's, yes, there's a henge shop. I'll make sure I get a picture as I walk back to the car later on. But uh, on the whole, you know, everything goes on. The farmers are are working uh, around the stones. There's crops around them. There's, ah, uh, you know, the, there's even a crop circle, which I'll, I'll try and find in a while for you. Somebody said to me, go, make sure you go and see the crop circle. I'm not sure I believe heavily in crop circles, but we'll, we'll go try and seek it anyway. But, um, yeah, so... You know, it's, it's a sort of very authentic nature about this place, which I absolutely adore. Uh, remember last week we heard from Singe, 
And the male was very much about finding peace in your work and your life. And I think it was also about being okay to feel and be vulnerable in yourself and about, most importantly, about your photography and your creativity. And uh, not being, you know... Or, or being too hard on yourself. It was a, it was a, a amazingly generous email in uh, letting us into to his life and how he feels. And I, I think sometimes you, you know, you're you're at your most genuine and authentic when sometimes you feel vulnerable, aren't you? If I think back to my radio days, I, the time of my father's passing, when I was very much working in a a light entertainment format, there's. Uh, there's a marked difference prior to my dear father passing and, and after that I can hear through tapes from, from those days. Um, I mean, I'm not saying I went all serious and dowdy. Dad was, after all, the life and soul of any party, so I'm not sure he'd have wanted me to be dowdy. And I, I carried on doing the breakfast show that I was doing, which was known as a, a, zoo, a zoo format, which means there's lots of people in a studio. That's what zoo format means. But then after, I, I noticed that listening to tapes, I quietened a bit. Not dowdy, no, but I quietened a bit. And I, I think certainly with some of the requests and the dedications and... Some of the competitions we did, like sending people to go, go. We sent, we sent one. Um, I think we've talked about this before. We sent somebody back to to spend uh, the last few weeks with a relative in um, in Australia, and I, I can, I just hear this em empathic nature after I'd uh, I'd lost my dad, and I, I think that uh, you know, often I think. That exp I didn't think so much about it at the time, clearly, but uh, I know it made a difference to me. And, and I, that was a period of my life when I was uh, my most vulnerable. But um, I had another mail following last week, weeks from Singe. And if this show is like a photographic story, I make no apologies for having a follow-up because it is. Like, well, I like photography. I think this show, as far as I, I'd like to make it, sort of weave it, is, um, is a, I think it's a collection of stories. You know, we've been doing this, what, for, for just over a year properly as the format that it is. And it's, and it's fantastic that we're getting emails from uh, some, some of you who, who listen and take part and contribute that uh, are like ongoing stories. And uh, we're getting to know you really well. And hang on a second. I'm going to have to get a picture of this because this, this stone here right in front of me, this is like, there's like a face in it. I mean, that's got to be coincidence, hasn't it? Just a quick snap. Here we go. ISO 200. F, what should we go for here? Yeah. Shutter speed. Oh, it's quite bright at the moment. I've got the ND filter on, on my X100V. Shutter speed 400, 500. It's sort of flicking between the two. There we go. You'll see it. You'll recognise it. You tell me. Do you think that, that, uh, that stone, that Avebury stone, has a, has a face in it? Yes, it does, doesn't it? So let, yeah, let's talk about Singe. So I had this, uh, I had this other mail following last week's from Singe. Um, he'd shared about his breakdown, about the piece he finds in his beloved Dorset making pictures, about the fact that he feels, in some respects, too nervous to host an exhibition, though he'd dearly like to. And he felt that, it, that he was sort of like treading water. Well, he, he sent in some pictures, and I'm going to share them on the show page today. As I said, it is quite a busy show page for, for pictures. There's plenty to inspire you today. Let me read his words, and then I actually have something that I'd like to, to add. Attached to some images, he says, in, uh, in first lockdown and some more up to date with the landscape ones, when life opened up a little. It meant I could travel back to my place in South Sea and across to West Dorset to see my folks. I like abstract tones and texture more than full colour shots. Or well, in the case of the, the tulips, it was about cutting out the subject and using their colours, something which I, I do a lot now. Most are from the garden or the, or the window box and all with available light, all handheld, bit of tech just in case, <laughs> X-Pro2 with a, a Nikkor 60mm micro and manual focus. I made a website in, in lockdown, it's just showing my images, but not really for promoting as such. And uh, I will put the link in, it's um, stjohnthesnaptist.com. <laughs> Fantastic. My Instagram is the same name, but uh, that has my personal ramblings on it too. From Singe. There we go. So on the face of it, yeah, it's a mail, like many send in, to, uh, you know, attach pictures and, and share them for you on the show page. But uh, I want to add something here, because your email last week, Singe, 
was all about how you didn't feel you had the confidence to to host an exhibition and it was all about you know finding confidence in your work and and we I think we talked about imposter syndrome and all those kind of things around it as well didn't we I'm sure we did the weeks do meld but I'm sure we did well singe for fear that you're going to think I'm just going to ace a platitude or 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 falsely compliment you but not really mean it can I say your work on this site that I'm going to link to and of course I'm going to put the pictures on the show page as well is simply stunning Studland Bay and South Sea Pier silhouettes right up my dark contrasty avenue um (laughs) The picture that I'm sharing on the show page of the of the misty walk, completely and utterly perfect. I remember a, uh, it seems a bit of a tangent. I'll take it anyway. I remember a, a speech, probably the best groom's speech I've ever, ever heard. It was a very short one. It was about five or six minutes, and that's, uh, that's probably a good length for, for a speech. But uh, I remember, it's just the way he said it. I won't do it any justice. I remember he got up. His name was Andy, and um, his wife was Sarah. And he, and he got up and he said, Sarah, you are perfect. Just perfect. And the way he said it, so genuine, so heartfelt. And I, I yeah, I've never heard of, yeah, he said more, of course, in that six minutes than just that word. But uh, if, if I could attach the same sort of meaning to saying to you, Singe, that that picture, those pictures, and the misty picture in particular, perfect, then, uh, well, I'd have, I'd, have, I'd, have, I'd have done your pictures and your work justice. Composition, light, everything. But then on your website, so this isn't a picture that you can see within the, uh, within the pictures I'm showing on the show page, unless somehow I've got it between, <laughs> between now and then. But it, it'll be on Singe's site, and I'm going to link to it because I want you to go there anyway. Studland 3. You'll see it on the front page. It's, um, it's a picture of... It's, uh, well, picture this, actually. Close your eyes. Oh, not if you're driving. But uh, if you're not, close your eyes. Imagine. I want you to imagine the sea. Shall I roll in some sound effects? I don't really like to use... We have done it a couple of times with letters, haven't we? Let's roll in some sort of gentle sort of beach in the background. You know, that kind of su- summer, summer sound that you think, oh... It sort of rolls back the years. and you... So there we go. There's, there's some sea. Now I want you to look back and I want you to look into, into the dunes there. Um, well, the dunes that I always have in my mind are the ones from exactly this place. It's probably why this picture's so potent. The, the long, thin grass that moves really easily with the, with the wind and it sort of shapes it back and forth. It's almost like... I don't know, I might be becoming too poetic now, but uh, you can imagine it's like the, the, uh, the sea, is it sea grass that you get underneath, which, uh, you know, as the, tide, as, as, the, as the tide comes in and out over rocks, you see it sort of wave one way, wave back the other way. This is exactly what this photograph feels like. And I, I'm going to say the long grass on the beach there, that picture, and I mean this, actually spoke to me. Now, that sounds woo-woo, I know, but coming back to my dear dad and mum, that's where, we, that's where we spent our holidays a lot. And my youth is tied up in the photograph that you show, playing in those dunes with a, the with a long grass that threatened to leave, leave you with <laughs> tiny little leaf cuts. Dad, I've cut my hand. Were you grabbing the grass as you were running through it? Yes, don't do that then. I can hear the sea in your pictures, and I really mean that. I can hear it. And uh, I want to be the first, and I hope there will be many more who say exhibit. E-X-H-I-B-I-T, exhibits. One day, when you're ready. When you're ready. For me, Singe, you are most certainly ready. Welcome to the, uh, the Friday photo walk. The, uh, I think, I'm fairly confident, the only photography show of its kind. I know that uh, people have done sort of walk and talks with their, with their podcast, but it, 
I, I don't think it's been a regular running thing or something that's... Uh, I don't, I, well, you're going to tell me now. Well, Neil, there is this podcast called, but I don't think there's, there's anything else quite like it. And you're part of it. You're part of this community. And I think the, the Photo Walk programme in particular... That community is really starting to grow, so thank you for being part of it. And, of course, there's other ways you can be part of this. I'm unashamedly going to say thank you immediately to the, the patrons who support this show. Without your, without your support, it certainly would not be here. I'd have said, look, you know, it's, it's been fun trying, but I can't see any way that I'm going to be able to keep this up and my photography and make it into something that, um, you know, I, 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 can, I can do at this quality... Uh, this frequency because uh yeah it is it is a i mean i put all the effort of a radio show into it oh neil sh- stop it all right okay we know this yes all right so thank you to the patrons i really appreciate your your help and um certainly the um the more members we build the bigger the community becomes which is great because then you start conversing through it and helping each other that's really important and, uh, and, of course, that's a way of growing the show. Um, I want to, you know, there's, always, there's plans I have. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to share them because then you'll hold me to them. They're super-duper ideas. Dad, you're embarrassing. That's a really old-fashioned phrase. All right. But, um, yeah, uh, but, <laughs> but they could only really happen when we have uh, patrons on board that mean that, yeah, I can spend more time doing this, being with you, forming a community. And... Uh, and of course, keep up my photography, but you know the the balance between the two will become more podcast, which is uh, which is what I what I like. I'm sounding confused because I'm thinking, shall I go that way? There's stones everywhere. Wherever I go, I've got cracking pictures to make. There's no doubt about that. Anyway, we'll go this way. Um, oh, and also, yeah, yeah, you can join the the Facebook group. We made our one thousand. It's not about numbers, Neil. I know. Vanity, vanity. But it's wonderful that uh, a thousand members are now in the private Facebook group, and uh, and, it, and it's wonderful that uh, that the posts, uh, the po- some of the posts that you, uh, I know sometimes the the engagement on some posts seems lower, but it does get seen. Just because somebody might not comment on it doesn't mean it doesn't get seen or appreciated. And then sometimes we get a post where it just goes wild, which is fantastic. So uh, if you'd like to join, you can do. We have a Facebook page, which is a public page, where uh, I publish the, the episodes coming up. But um, then if you, if you go to the, the Facebook group and you're wearing the right kind of trainers, as we say, we'll let you in. And that's where you'll find uh, a whole load of people like you that love photography. Um, where do we go? Uh, well, it's almost time to point that camera to do a first thing that you see, I think. But first up, let's do a rolling thank you for those pictures that appear on the show page this week. Mark uh, Lappensay is where we'll start. The left photog, as he is known, <laughs> with the, the macro flower. We've never really done a full episode on, on a macro legend, have we? We should do. Um, there are plenty of really thumpingly good macro photographers out there. Catherine Cunningham is painting. It's the um, first thing that you see picture. But it's it's a kind of like a it's a product shot all at the same time. I think I could see that on a on a billboard for a for a paint for a paint brand. I approve of the colour, by the way. Tom Hampshire in his special sanding mask, looking a little bit like Johnny Rotten with a stare, sort of Johnny Rotten meets Fortnite character, really. Uh, Gilang Dockman with his uh, new lockdown view of the empty tennis courts. Should have been his daughter in front of the courts, but uh, she turned and ran as he raised his camera. And you, ju- <laughs> and you just get, sort of blink and you miss a bit, but uh, when you understand the story, you get the, the back of her heel, which I think still counts as a portrait. She's partly in there. Um, Indonesia is, uh, I know at the moment, it's a tough time for you, Galang, where you are. Uh, as he said, they've gone into emergency community restriction. They don't like to use the L word, lockdown in Indonesia, the government that is. Uh, stay safe because I know, Galang, you're not allowed to make uh, the photo walks that you, you dearly love making. So uh, just getting out to do a little bit of exercise right in front of your house by the looks of it is, uh, is all that uh, you're able to do at the moment. But uh, keep safe. Happy days are here again, I'm sure, at some stage. They will be. Alan Beach, Greenfield's taken on your iPhone 8, walking the dog last Friday lunchtime. I don't have one of those dogs, he says, that I can let off the lead while I take photos. Nor did we ever, especially our Jack Russell. Oh, he was, he, 
He was awful. Snip the Jack Russell. Zoom, gone. He'd spend an hour going, snip, 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 snip. Sometimes I hear it in my sleep. Uh, Andy Tibbolt, rain on the window as a tropical storm passes. Oh, look at that. Ja uh, Jens Roder is, is mowing the lawn. Um, hopefully in straight lines. Jamie Gonzalez, he's a Navy port engineer and he was working in the mobile office, i.e. his truck. He took a picture of what to me, Jamie, looks like <laughs> looks like it's a fast food lunch on the passenger seat. Happy days. And Peter Gazer literally stopped at the, the sink doing some washing up. And then uh, Lynn Fraser, a bedroom view of the fields and not a car in sight. Ah, oh, I well, heard that. No, you didn't, Carl. You're too far away at the moment. Wonderful. Thank you for the first things that you see and if I haven't done yours this week as I say every week it will be so um, it will be in there so it's not been a waste of time making and sending it will be in there promise promise um, if you'd like to send in your first thing that you see after you've heard what we're about to do then you can send it to the studio address which is uh, studio at photographydaily.show studio at photographydaily.show right are we ready <laughs> is that a yes? Did you hear that? It's a very tuneful yes. Thank you. I know. We're going to do it now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so grab your camera or smartphone or action camera or... Uh, I'm trying to think of all the different cameras. We said Roliflex last week, didn't we? Or Monochrome, if you so wish. And uh, I'm going to give you a countdown. And what I want you to do, um, only when you hear the number one and take... Then you, can, then you can take the shot. So don't take it yet. Keep walking. I'm going to do the same. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Raise the camera. Oh. <laughs> Out. And go. Oh, that's two. I'll take the first one. And the second one, I promise not to use. Right, back to your mails. Michael Dries has, I think, got a, a bit of inspiration here. Yeah, there's a, a photographic project here that uh, Michael has done, photographing doors. And the idea, I think the idea of what's behind them is, uh, is equally as intriguing as as the door themselves, I really do. Um, his pictures will be on the show page today. What I love, Michael, is the way that you've gravitated toward toward texture. Um, like it's like sort of finding a a lived-in face. Someone, although in this case, that that you know, there's there's stories to tell in the the lived-in. Is it patina? Patina? Yeah, the paint peel on the doors, fantastic. Michael wrote, if the eyes are the windows to the, get this by the way, stand by, write this down, you'll love this. If the eyes are the windows to the soul, then doors are the sentinels to the inner secrets of an abandoned structure. That is book worthy. Who might have passed in and out and what type of experiences did these doors carry? Does an aging structure yearn for its busy past? Or does it accept its impending fate gracefully? Do I dare step inside or would this, would this act be sacrilege? I often pose these questions as I linger by a door, he says. My questions seldom answered. My nostalgic yearnings only partially quenched with a two-dimensional photograph that says, I was here. Actually, he says, proclaims, I was here. Oh, get you, Michael. Fantastic. Really, bravo. Anyway, says Michael, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this group of passionate and caring photographers. It's a respectful and inspirational community. I'm proud to be a part of it. Ah, yes, yes. He's joined our inner circle <laughs> in Patreon. Well, that sounds a little bit Avebury Stones, Neil. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Um, but Michael, thank you for that. And I'm going to put the pictures on the show page. They're fantastic. They really are. Uh, but um, equally... There's no but in this, no. And equally, your, um, your work reminds me a little of, 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 well, a lot actually, of Helen Jones Florio, who I, who I follow on Instagram. According to the Insta description, Grace in Decay, Doors and Storefronts. Such a great project. You, you can actually buy photo prints 
they're great. I mean, I'd, I'd happily have these hanging hang in my house. And I know I've mentioned Helen before because, of course, she's married to a, I like to think, a good friend of the show, both of them, um, Helen and Jason, Jason Florio, the photojournalist, who we featured on a, an episode, really, only quite recently. And uh, you'd, you'd have heard Helen, obviously, on a, on a photo walk in, a, in the last week. Was it last week? Again, these weeks pass so quickly. So I, I, <laughs> I rang her up and I thought, well, I'll have a, I'll have a quick chat about um, Helen's door project. And maybe, Michael, we should talk about yours at some stage, actually on microphone. But uh, here's Helen talking about uh, her door project, because I, I think it's, you know, sometimes the simplest ideas, they're the most potent, the most powerful, aren't they? And um, next week, it could possibly be the week after, because there might be a guest just leapfrogging in next week, which slightly changes the ending that I should have put out on Wednesday's show. But um, I'm I'm thinking that it might be next week where Helen has, uh, from the words you're about to hear, a slightly longer interview to talk about how she's used Instagram for this this project, as we have an Instagram special coming up. Anyway... Here's Helen Jones Florio. This is something, it's my, it's mine, it's my my passion. It really is a passion, I love it. And I never get bored, I've got, honestly, I've got thousands of thousands of doors. <laughs> Mainly from Malta and Gambia, because that's where I've spent the most of my time over the last 10, 15 years. So um, it's, it's gonna be them. But then I might go to a little town in the States and they've got amazing old doors, you know, and, but, um, yeah, it has, it has become a, a kind of, it's kind of running parallel with what we're doing. But it also, it kind of fits it, going back to stories behind doors, um, we've been photographing the victims in Gambia of the former regime, as you know. And um, there's, I've been doing, a started a series a couple of years ago, and it's something we'll do more of when we get back, is I've been, we've been interviewing the people inside the houses, the, the victim and survivors, and, um, but I've also been photographing their doors from, from the outside. So there's, and there's a little, there's definitely a little story which I know, you know, I'm thinking about not asking people, but I do know those stories and that they're part of that. Helen Jones Florio. And if you get a chance to uh, go to her Instagram, hang on a minute, not if you get a chance, definitely go visit. That's a sort of more polite request than, uh, than order, but make sure you do. <laughs> that sounded like an order because it's fantastic, it really is. I'll leave the link on the on the show page and uh, as I say Helen's coming up on the show in a slightly longer form soon talking about that project and its relation um, with with, uh, with oh, its relationship with Instagram using Instagram as a platform um, it's a wonderfully intriguing project and like all in- intriguing or the best intriguing projects quite simply in many respects uh, though of course uh, inquisitively shot fantastic work I'm just walking out to this um crop circle that I was told was here I met a man in a car just now very very friendly chap at his window down he was watching his wife feeding the the sheep and uh, he said uh, he'd met the farmer that made this crop circle and to be fair all the tram lines they do run out to it so it's a bit obvious but there's actually somebody right in the middle of the crop circle I wonder if they're thinking they sit there aliens may beam them up shall I tell him no let him be blissfully unaware. I'm dead centre in the middle of this uh, this crop circle. People have left little notes here. What does that one say? Thank you for all your trail magic. Love always. Ooh, there's a few chewed apples. Quite sure what all that's about. But, yeah, clearly the farmer made this. <laughs> uh, I think the donation sign rather proves that the farmer created this. <laughs> or oh, maybe the sheep did. There's a lot of sheep around here. Maybe they thought, I'll tell you what, chaps, come on. Come on, ladies. This way, let's all go create a crop circle and watch the humans take photographs. Aren't they proper chumps? Mind you, I mean, it's quite a simple crop circle, this one. I wish I could get a drone shot of it. Anyway, there we go. The crop circle of Avebury. Or Farmer Brown's crop circle of Avebury, anyway. Right. Out of the crop 
circle before we're beamed up. Here's a mail from Dominique Martel. Hello, Neil. Today, instead of doing a photo walk, I went on a photo bike. I didn't take as many pictures as a, a regular photo walk, but I listened to the latest Friday photo walk whilst cycling. Uh, so it all counts. He's attached some pictures, which uh, I will, of course, be posting to the show page, which is, uh, as, I, as I say this week, a nice packed one for you. Um, are you ready for me to squirm a little uncomfortably, though? I'm putting my, my Britishness down on a stone for a second, or at least I would if they weren't all eight feet. Look at the size of that one. Hang on a minute. I'm just, I'm just sort of st stone picture happy today. This one is... Uh, Ah, there you go, straight away. Another one. Uh, shutter speed 500th, F4, ISO 200, there we go. Neutral density filter is on, it's a bright day today. Breaking away to get more pictures of stones. Look, I'm gonna have an Instagram account of stones at this, at this rate. Yes, I'm putting my Britishness down on a stone for a second here. Because um, Dominique writes, I'd... Uh, I'd also like to say how good it is to listen to you. You're always positive and that's so refreshing. I recall on some episodes you were reading people's emails and they were mentioning this, this was only a snap or I'm not a real photographer or I'm not a professional photographer. And you replied, you made a photograph. You're a photographer. This is not just a snap. This is your photograph. Yes, that does sound like me. I know that's the sort of thing I say, but I mean it. He says, well, my daughter's 12 and she loves painting, acrylic painting. Ah, oh, the proper messy kind, eh? The stuff that you can really leave on the, <laughs> on, the, on the tabletop. How did this get here? Oh, I don't know. It must have magicked itself out of the tube. No, it didn't. You didn't put the cap on. She came to me a few weeks ago and showed me one of her paintings, saying, I'm not really a great painter, Daddy, but I did that. Remembering what you said, I told her, you made that painting. You are a painter. This is a very nice painting and you should be proud of it. The smile on her face, Neil, and her eyes sparkling, that was priceless. It's good to hear you being positive and encouraging others. So thank you, love the show from Dominique. Well, if that was what happened, that does indeed. Yeah, there we are, second proud moment this week. Or oh, third or fourth, maybe, I don't know. So thank you sincerely, Dominique was a wonderful email to receive and uh, oh I wish you'd have made a picture of your daughter's smile at that moment that, that would have been fantastic but just seeing her doing it that's priceless isn't it here's uh, a mail from Martin Keane hi Neil great to hear Tim Wallace on the show yesterday oh that would have been Wednesday oh that's given the game away oh Neil your Friday photo walking on a Thursday you don't seriously think I can do all this production <laughs> um make pictures in the light and have it all done before breakfast do you i have actually done that to be fair no i have done it i've done it a couple of occasions but um yeah i'm i'll admit hands up uh, that uh, often i do make the walk a day before i try and make it as close to the program going out because of course sometimes there are irrelevant mails that uh, that reference something that, that happened this week such as this one really um, I dabble in car photography, says Martin, but nowhere near the level of Tim. Yeah, Tim was our guest, Tim Wallace. What a phenomenal photographer. His work, his automotive work, and his, um, his aviation work now, and, uh, and I think the aerospace work is just beginning to, beginning to grow. Just stunning, really is. Fif was it 15 years? And um, he is at the absolute top of his trade. No doubt about that at all. Um, but I dabble in car photography, but nowhere near the level of Tim. My pictures are the musings of a classic car show visitor. You're never... What shall I do now? You're never just a car show visitor. You're a photographer. The story of him sitting down for four days with a piece of paper and mapping out his plans for a photo company were inspirational. Though sadly for me, I fear they may have come a little bit too late. But I'm OK. If he worried about a chance of job in his 40s, I probably shouldn't reveal my age. Well, when I read those words, instantly I went scuttling off to do a bit of research on the, on the internet and find out who has made a success of their lives very much later on in, in, their, in their years. 
in their more mature years, you might say. And there's loads of them. Really, I mean, there's, there's the obvious... Immediately, you get the very obvious ones. Um, so, Harry Bernstein, the writer, 96, when he had his first hit. And, of course, um, the Kentucky Fried Chicken Man, Mr. Sanders. Now, he was 65, I think, when he when he went bankrupt. But it was much later that his chicken stores, or his, his restaurant, it was much later where, when he sold those, wasn't it? Yes. So he'd, he'd been through the mill, as they say, as a business person. But, uh, so he was successful, yeah, later on in life. And you could easily count Nelson Mandela, can't you? I mean, I know there's a, a different kind of story attached, but still, but still, president, aged 76. There happens to be another president who you could uh, apply that to as well, couldn't you? Of course. But, uh, yeah, so there's... Oh, it's never too late for anything, is it, really? It was great to... Uh, anyway, as, as, um, as, as he says, it was great to hear him reinventing himself. But uh, is there any chance, says Martin, that he could come back and talk about his technique sometimes as well? I'm sure, yes. We didn't really get involved in the tech, did we, in this particular one? I, I did have a load of tech questions penned out, but uh, we had an hour, uh, and um, unfortunately that, uh, that hour... It ran out, and I felt very much like I was taking more of Tim's time than he had, uh, he had, he had budgeted. But he's such a generous man in terms of, uh, of what he offered up information-wise. And um, so I'm, I'm hoping, and I did, I did uh, hint to him. <laughs> he hasn't responded to it yet, but I'm sure he will. Talking of generosity, he spent a lot of time putting together a, a, a fantastic... Um, portfolio of images that I could share on the website. I didn't share them all, I shared those that I thought were appropriate to the show and certainly one particular image uh, that he talked specifically about. So I do hope that he might come back and do a sort of behind the scenes chat with us at some stage. But we should play a bit of Tim Wallace, shouldn't we? Of course we should. Episode 249. When I first when I first started shooting, I think probably the first manufacturer I shot for was probably Land Rover. And when you shoot for Land Rover, it's a very tied down brief. I mean, it, it is now even. Um, and then there's guidelines. So there's, there's, a, there's a PDF of many, many, many pages, which says that you can't do this and you can't do that. And don't go beyond this focal length and don't go under this focal length and don't shoot within this distance at this height um, and things like that. And it's pretty daunting because it's, it's not, the guys on social media that see you post an image, and they look at it and they go, wow, that's really great. You must have had great fun. I don't think they realise the planning and the homework that goes into it. It can be quite intense. So it's a very tied down brief. But when you build up a reputation, especially within a business, but specifically within a client, you, you tend to get more free reign. So you will still have a brief because there is a predetermined list of images that are needed to look a certain way and feel a certain way, but you'll also have a bit of time built into it to go a bit off piste to see what you can come up with. Tim Wallace from episode 249. Uh, we're at Avebury this week for the Friday photo walk. It's wonderful to be traveling around uh, a little bit more. And uh, as I've said before, although it'll probably be more sort of an autumnal thing onwards. I'd like to, to get out a bit more in the, in the UK. At the moment, at the moment, see, this is what I mean by the show developing and the community growing, all those sort of things for the future, you know, getting further afield to do photo walks with you will be absolutely fantastic. But yes, Avebury this week for the photo walk in amongst these uh, four to 5,000 year old stones. There's definitely a, definitely a piece around this place. It's extraordinary to, to think about about you know where you're standing isn't it can you imagine having a can you imagine having a time machine oh i have many times imagined this with a camera time machine and a camera well wouldn't that be the best treat for any photographer where would you like to go today well what can i think about historically to have some pictures where people would say oh my word what an amazing film set no not film set mate the real thing i went back 570 years to get that Yes, can you imagine though being being here with a time machine? I'm not quite sure what that have <laughs> what that have made of me in my walking shorts, my baseball cap, boots, 
a t-shirt sporting an X100V. Not quite sure what it means, but uh, I've seen a, a lot of people touching the stones. They reach out and place their palms firmly. Oh, look at this one. This one looks like, a, it's like, like, like there's a face in it. You can clearly make out a face. Let me, um, let me get a picture, hold on. I've got my neutral density filter on because it's quite, uh, well, it's very bright. Here we go. 160 ISO F4, 1 2 5th. There we go. You'll see a, you'll see clearly a face when you look back through the pictures I've made of today's, well, today's photo walk pictures from me, you'll see clearly a face in that, that stone. I'm going to reach out and touch it. There we go. What's going to happen? Do I, should I feel some sort of, unearthly presence. I hear something. Oh, no, it's a VW camper van. And I've touched it. Nothing happened. I was expecting some sort of magic then. Pandemic over kind of magic. Here you go. It's funny to think you're touching stones that thousands of, were put here thousands and thousands of years ago. Delivered to uh, well, dragged, weren't they? Dragged by thousands of, of men. I'm not even sure. Were cattle involved? If they were, it would take a lot of them. It's incredible. And it's quite nice because at Stonehenge, of course, um, it's, that's a World Heritage Site as well, but that one they've managed to sort of rope it off so it can get nowhere, nowhere remotely close to it. Uh, whereas here, you can walk up and touch the stones, and thankfully, people seem to be respecting them. I haven't seen one yet that's had uh, some Egypt scrawl his name all over it. So, here are some final mails of the week. Hello, Neil. This one's from Paul Balleresque. You mentioned that Dan Milner's interview um, was in episode 23. We did. Why did we mention that? Uh, oh, there has to be a reason. You should get Dan back to talk about his project, AG23. Oh, I see. Yes, he was episode 23. Ooh, that's a bit spooky that he's been doing a project called AG23. What is it then? Uh, AG23 is a zine collaboration designed to promote understanding as a function of dialogue and art. Oh, my word. That sounds deep. So deep, I'll have to wear my life preserver that day if I'm going to do an interview about that. You, you know me, Paul. <laughs> Not so deep. Oh, Neil, you're OK. Yeah, I will. I'll, dr I'll drop him a line. And uh, oi, photographer, says Paul Balleresque, which I should probably, uh, I should probably uh, uh, feed you some context with that in terms of, uh, well, Paul has heard me talk on, on a couple of podcasts, I'm sure, about uh, absolutely loathing that. You know, when somebody, when I go to a... It's a, it's a wedding that you shoot. Not always weddings, but primarily. And somebody who's had a, a little more of the falling down juice than you have, let's just say, of an evening, uh, will uh, click their fingers and say, Oi! Oi, photographer! Get yourself over here. I want a picture. I grimace. Obviously inside. But, uh, yeah, Oi, photographer, he says. Um, uh, you walk through the woods with a clipboard, a camera and a mic on your phone. This audience... We need a selfie. Well, that's the problem, Paul. I can't do a selfie, can I? Because I've got clipboard in one hand, camera just here, and I'm holding the thing that I would do... Well, I don't... Can I do a selfie with my X100? I'll have a go. Uh, that's where I could do with a flippy-out screen going the other way, isn't it? That upsets some people, though, doesn't it? Let's see. Can I do a selfie? Uh, oh, oh, no. Oh, look just run out of batteries it's kind of focusing but it's not snapping and you're not going to believe me at all i know you're not you know you're, you're now saying no it's not neil don't tell us porkies well i'm afraid it has yeah well i will do it yes i shall do one uh <laughs> you might have to remind me paul but i will paul's going to remind me every week now isn't he neil you mentioned that yes i know Oh, and on that note, by the way, I must mention emails that have not been read yet. Because you might, might, sometimes I think some, sometimes you work it out, you think, hang on, that sounds like that mail was written way after my mail. It's a bit like being uh, 
in a queue at the bar and you're thinking hang on i've been here i've been here five minutes and you've served him and her and him him down there and then her look all those people before me you still haven't done me i know sometimes i've been holding things back because i'm thinking they're kind of dovetail or jigsaw jigsaw is probably a better word with something that, that i've got plan coming up and sometimes I just sort of move the order around and sometimes a story pops up that you think oh I must use that now and some t- oh, look it's all sometimes but I promise you just like with the first thing that you see everything everything capital E everything that you send in is um, is ex- is extremely appreciated and very valuable and I will get to it um, it may take a week or two sometimes a little bit more but uh, I will get there Right, last mail of the week time. Oh, look, there's the Red Lion. We are, no, seriously, that's the pub at the end of this trail. And um, I'm going to have to, oh, God, I, I want to take a picture at this moment because that's important because it needs to be in my story of pictures that I put up on the website. But um, I'm <laughs> going to have to return to the car. Stupidly, I did not. Ugh, what have I just stepped in? Oh, please. Honestly, I know there's a lot of sheep around here, so I'll forgive you. Um, yeah, I'll ha- I'm going to have to. S- I have to go back to car, collect a battery, and come out and do that red lion picture because uh, I'm looking at it and I'm telling you about it, so it should be in the story, shouldn't it? Yes, it should be. Oh, sorry. Uh, last mail. Hi, Neil. It's my first time writing to uh, Photography Daily, so I thought I'd share my Fri- Friday photo walk experience with you. Being in New Zealand. Ah, yes, this is from Matt Searles. Being in New Zealand, I've been saving photo walk editions of the podcast in the previous week to accompany my rural mail run up the beautiful Rang... Now, I'm going to get this right because you've, <laughs> you've said here that I do struggle a bit with some of the Maori place names. I do, admittedly. Rangitata. Was that Rangitata? They both sound amazing. Uh, anyway, it's on the South Island. Great to hear you experience the great outdoors while I'm doing the same. See, that's what this is all about. I like to sort of believe that you're all listening on a Friday. It's a Friday photo walk after all, but that's just not... <laughs> it's not possible, is it, really? I mean, Matt, you've got clocks doing really different things in your part of the world, and then I know some people save it for the weekend. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, as long as you're experiencing it while you're out and about with me, that's the idea of the photo walk, you know. Me with my microphone, I haven't said that this week much, have I? Me with my microphone and my camera and uh, your emails and you with your camera, with your earbuds on so we're kind of both together. Perfect. That's the idea of it, although I know sometimes it's not quite consumed in that manner. As I'm behind the wheel five days a week, I always take my camera with me, but recently I've been inspired to think of my Friday run. See, he's a mailman, actually, I should say. Uh, When I was saying last mail of the week time, last mail of the week time is with a mailman. Look at that. There is a connection. Uh, But yeah, so um, yes, he's a a mailman, is Matt. I'll say a little bit more about him in, in just a second's time. Is that a tractor at last? I won't get a picture. If he's gonna roll up here, and there's no battery in my camera. That'll serve you, Neil. Why didn't you put a battery in your back pocket? I know, I always do that usually. It's Carl's fault, he didn't remind me. Yes, I always take my camera with me, but recently I've been inspired to think of my Friday run uh, more as a photo walk to echo the theme for the day. The shots I've included below are therefore taken from my driver's seat as I make my way on my 100 kilometer round trip. I primarily shoot with my Fujifilm GFX 50R with the incredibly versatile GF 45 to 100 lens being my main optic. Feel free to check out my Instagram feed with my my mail run photos. So uh, the Instagram is mail to messy and you can see mattsalesphotography.com as well. Now, some of you are saying, hang on a minute, that sounds a bit odd because you you interviewed him last week on the Fujicast. Yes, I did. You can hear the full length interview on the Fujicast. It's nice sometimes to... uh, to do a sort of tie our our two communities together because I'm passionate about both podcasts, of course. Though they are are very, very different. One is sort of more of a sort of zoo format show with my old reprobate friend Mullins, the Fuji Film Ambassador. And this one is me on the Todd with you on a photo walk and, of course, our our main focus interview show on on a Wednesday. So, yeah, Matt was on that. So it was lovely to receive an email from him sort of introducing himself even though he knows that I know him but uh, 
That's a nice way to do it for the community, this very special community that we have here on the Photo Walk. Keep up the good work, Neil. You've created a fantastic show and community. And that's the bit I keep coming back to, because that's the bit that makes me feel really, really, well, it all makes me feel proud, but that bit is wonderful if that's what's, what's growing. Best regards, Matt. So yes, let's play a bit of Matt Searles. Now, Matt, he drives 50 kilometers one way, 50 kilometers back the other way, uh, through the most amazing scenery in New, New Zealand, Mesopotamia. It's just beautiful and his pictures are absolutely stunning. So yes, there will be links. Let's hear a bit of Matt, shall we? Yeah, it's a bit, little bit of a complex situation that um, I seem to have got myself into down here. Um, I'm a cafe owner in a very rural part of New Zealand. And one of the things that uh, that happens down here is that you can sometimes be a mail contractor when you own another business. So when we bought our cafe three years ago, I inherited a New Zealand Post rural mail route with the cafe. And that's been my real photographic outlet ever since, really. Uh, I'm very fortunate in that my mail route takes me up to some of the most fantastic countries countryside in this part of New Zealand. So most of my photography now happens when I'm basically delivering the mail. I kind of describe myself sometimes as a rural street photographer. And sometimes I'm a landscape photographer and other times I'm very much that kind of rural documenter. Uh, I, the person I kind of look to for a lot of my inspiration was James Revillius basically. And mm. his body work is a great inspiration of what you can do in a very small area and trying to document the, the daily life of people within that area and also the landscape that's that's there. Matt Searles on the mail run in New Zealand. Quite the journey today, then. I'm about to ask a personal favour. Stand by. I'm psyching myself up for it. A quick mention for Niall Grayson, who messaged me to say, usually when the last bit goes through, I think our walk is done, Neil. I've never made it through to the real end, whatever the real end is. But last weekend, I was listening to you in the bath, which I know is not the idea, but I had no idea. You are as bonkers as our family and that you talk to your car. I've now had to go back through a load of photo walks to hear you sign off with a chat with your car. I'm tempted to suggest you stop inhaling the fumes in your dark room. I promise I'm not. Thank you, Niall. Uh, well, slightly guilty as charged, and now you have to listen to the very last seconds. Right, a word about next Wednesday's show. It uh, is an Instagram special of sorts. We talk with Johnny Keeley, whose YouTube channel is growing off the back of his, well, reasonably strong and extensive studies of how Instagram works and is changing. And there's some stuff on there you just need to hear. But it's a doubleheader, really, because you heard from Helen Jones Florio, and she'll be on to talk about her Doors project more and how Instagram has played a part of its success. Favour time. Well, the fact you've listened this far is good enough, I suppose, but I'm trying to grow the podcast as ever, and it seems many do enjoy the Friday Photo Walk. The mailbag is growing, and it's really a photography podcast, unlike the, the many, well, very good interview shows out there, but this is very much you. You make it with your feedback, you guide it with how you're feeling, and you inspire it with the pictures and stories you send in. And I'd like for more photographers to understand the feeling many of you say you find in this show. That sense of quiet, that sense of a programme that calmly takes you, or rather joins you, on a photo walk to make pictures and stories, to quieten the noise of our otherwise busy lives. So, here's the favour. If you get a chance today, or over the next couple, please could you share the show. And here's the, well, some of the ways that works best. That could be by Facebook share, as we have the page, of course, now. It could be by copy-pasting the show page and adding it to Twitter from the website and using that method, perhaps sharing it in another Facebook private photography group that you're part of, or just emailing a friend who values the time they spend with a camera. There. Favour done. And honestly, I'm saying thank you as I say these words. So that's it for today. Keep sending your questions, your feedback and photo stories to studio at photographydaily.show so that I can feature you in this mailbag edition, which is the Friday Photo Walk. On that note, remember you can send in pictures from your own photo walks to appear on the episode show page online with links to your website or Instagram if you so wish. If you haven't yet, join our private Facebook group and follow us on Instagram. Links to all this and our guests and our wonderful, 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 wonderful supporters. 
how many more wonderfuls uh, from Patreon will be on the Photography Daily Show page today. You make this possible. So thank you to the members in there, sincerely. Music on the show from the incredible artlist.io. And I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you, and talking with you next time. And, uh, that's it for another week. I've really enjoyed this week being out amongst the stones. I'm not quite so sure I feel any form of, uh, oh, mystically healed in any way, shape or form. Car, have you forgotten something? Ah, yes I have. Don't tell me. Batteries. How did you know? They're on the seat. They fell out your pocket when you got out. Why didn't you think to tell me? I figured you were a big boy now. You can look after yourself. Well, that's not very generous of you. Well, to be fair, I really only noticed them when you were when you were gone down that track there. You're not going to want to take one of those stones home, are you? <laughs> I really don't think that we'll be able to get a... What would these be? What? 10 ton, 11 ton stone in the back of you, Kia. You're a... What are, what are you? You're an SUV, but you're not a magician. Thank God for that. I was dreading you were going to say, can we take a stone for the rockery? No, you're safe. Let's just get back home. Oh, after I've made a picture, I need to go and take a picture. All right. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.